<laughs> Thank you, Roxana. So I have also split conflicts uh, between the two technologies, as you can see. And also, I'm a good friend of Pedro. We published together two years ago. And we, they are saying that you can use uh, invasive imaging, since now you have a possibility of selecting patients with non-invasive imaging, even in primary prevention, and certainly in secondary prevention. And we just published this in the European Heart Journal with a very prominent role in guidance of uh, interventions with uh, imaging techniques. But uh, there is no story, there is no real debate when you are speaking of how to select the lesion you want to intervene upon. These, uh, are uh, uh, very recent data presented at EuroPCR this year, putting together in a meta-analysis FAME2, the NAMI3 pre-multi, compare acute, 2,400 patient-level meta-analysis of FFR-guided uh, treatment versus medical therapy, a stable angina or additional non-culpet lesion in ACS, and you see a difference in major uh, cardiac events like death and myocardial infarction, 30% relative risk reduction, 4.5% absolute risk reduction, five years follow-up in randomized clinical trials. And uh, yesterday I reported in the uh, 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 symposium the results at two years of Syntax 2, again presented this year at EuroPCR. I'm showing now the analysis at two years of the different uh, components of the combined endpoints, also deaths and certainly myocardial infarction go in the right direction, showing that if you guide the choice of the lesion you intervene upon based on physiology, like in Syntax 2, you get much better clinical result uh, at two years than when you just do blindly with angiography. And if you want to do better the surgery, that's the way to go. That's what FAME 3 is now exploring, completing follow-up. So what about comparing a result of imaging with the results of physiology? The best results for imaging are in the left main, which is not the best uh, place to use uh, optical coherence tomography because you can't really see osteostenosis or so IVUS comparisons. The oldest is the JUSTI trial with 55 patients. You need obviously no lesion in the uh, LAD and circumflex, so not many uh, cases can be found with uh, this anatomy. And then you have a reasonable uh, uh, similar uh, outcome with the two techniques with uh, a uh, threshold for uh, uh, imaging of 5.9 square millimeter. So everybody were quite convinced that this was a possible alternative to FFR, but then there were many other trials showing that even in the left main, you have very different threshold, like this large Korean trial showing a threshold of 4.5 square millimeter and a lot of areas of mismatch in the two directions. So practically the way I do, if I find more than six square millimeter I don't treat below, I want to have also a confirmation with physiology. And this is left main, the best result. If you look at other epicardial vessels, data are all over the place. You go from 4.5, the data of abizide uh, with IVUS, to 2.4, 2.8 in Korean and Japanese uh, uh, papers. So some example showing a not too prominent lesion in the LAD, also in a, a multiple view, just two lesions that look like small shelf lesion and a very irregular area that, of course, with OCT, you can see much better. It's a small ulcer in a, a lipid-rich plaque with two areas with quite important narrowing, 3, 1, 3, 4, compared with 8 distal and 12.1 millimeter square proximal. But if I ask the panel, they will all give you different opinions on whether this should be treated, yes or no. While if you make physiology, well, not always you get a consistent result with IFR that is just borderline threshold 0.89 and FFR, which is clearly positive, but definitely in a patient with a recent history of chest pain, multiple risk factors, 
I think is worthwhile and justified to go as we did for treatment eliminating this uh, possible unstable plaque. What we have learned, and also this morning you heard from Dr. Sharma, this is not a black and white uh, answer. And we can't really consider this threshold as an absolute limit of 89 for IFR, uh, 80 for um, uh, FFR, because biology behaves differently, because the reproducibility of a complex measurement, especially with FFR, where it involves adenosis, it involves the uh, access site where you inject the drug, uh, you do have a reproducibility which is quite poor. If you do a second measurement, you have a chance when you have uh, 0.8 to go in both direction in 20% of the times, and you need to have such a low or high level as 0 0.75, 0 0.85 to be consistent in the second measurement in 95% of the times. But also, when you have uh, values close to the threshold, these are not normal values. Already an IFR of 0.92 means that you have enough vasodilation of your distal bed to allow normal flow at rest and some compensation when you exercise to the point that you don't get ischemia. But your reserve is much reduced and beyond the threshold you will definitely get ischemia but is not a normal situation and also beyond this level you have situations where ischemia can be very mild so this is what has been shown in the Orbita uh, revived, revised data just presented and reported in circulation that the differences that you have between pre-intervention and post-treatment uh, stress echo is strictly related to the level of IFR and FFR. The lower this level, the more chances that the wall motion will improve after treatment. I will go very quickly with this example, which is a little bit the same story, uh, left main proximal uh, osteal circ diffuse disease of the LAD and uh, uh, multiple lesions in the LAD. And again, great information that will help your intervention telling you you have a 200 70 degree calcification just involving the bifurcation but opposite to that and multiple lesion proximal and distal but again this gives you just a number and a clear answer and in this particular case we use it just to treat the mid segment with generous pressure so i believe we should follow guidelines FFR to identify hemodynamically relevant coronary lesions and decide any multi in single vessel disease or multi vessel disease, IVUS and images to select how to optimize your intervention. And this is basically the way I put the four techniques together when to treat and which segment to treat, use physiology how to select the device to treat and have optimal expansion opposition use imaging thank you